All right, so we're finally able to get to the fun stuff. By now, you should have Media Composer installed on your computer. It should be licensed and ready to go. Uh, we've also gone through some of the basics of arranging the UI to our liking and started getting acquainted with some of the tools, keyboard shortcuts, and we brought in some footage into a bin. So we're ready to start editing our first sequence. Now, if you haven't made it to this point or you're unsure, we invite you to stop this video, go back to the beginning of the series, and get yourself acquainted with Media Composer so that you can jump right in with us whenever you're ready. Okay, so let's get started. In this video, we're gonna talk about organization. And we spoke briefly in an earlier video about Avid's media management on the back end and, and how it really separates us from other editors uh, and keeps things nice and tidy and running smoothly. Well, just as important as media management is, keeping your project, bins, media, and everything else organized inside the editor is just as important and will absolutely speed things up for you because you'll always know where a certain clip or piece of material is. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how I like to do things on a foundational level. As projects start to grow, things might deviate a little bit, but I like to keep the same concept so I know exactly what's going on in my project. It's super easy. Now, what I like to do right away is set up bins in a certain way so that I could separate certain types of media. Here's what I mean. First, I'll create a bin and name it sequence. This will be for all my sequences. As the edit starts to grow, uh, or say I work on an edit one day, the next time I return to make changes, I always duplicate that edit. Uh, just in case that if the edit goes in one direction and I really don't like it, by duplicating the last sequence I worked on, it allows me to go back if I need to. So again, the sequence bin will be where I store all the different versions of sequences in my project. Next, I'll create a bin for my video clips. If multiple cameras were used in my project, I might create a bunch of different bins and then label them for each camera. For this example, I'll just create a bin for camera A and camera B. Next, we'll create a music bin. This will be what I use to store any music that I might use in my sequence. A bin for voiceovers, a bin for graphics, and for titles. So you can see where I'm going with this. Keeping your media and bins organized this way as much as possible will make your life so much easier, especially as the project grows. Developing good habits now will ensure your success in the future. So in the next video, we'll get some media into this project. We'll start logging and sifting media just so we can get a better idea of what we have to work with so that we can start editing. 